It is the early summer of 1944, only weeks before the first B-29 raids begin on Japan from bases in western China. Two Japanese submarines, the Satsuki and the Matsu, slip out from Kiel, Germany, and begin the long, dangerous journey back to Japan. But the Japanese codes have been broken, and news of the journey of the two subs is immediately passed to technical air intelligence. They quickly realize the subs are carrying the plans to build the ME-262 jet. Allied planes and ships scour the seas for the Satsuki and the Matsu. The Satsuki, with its precious cargo, is tracked down and sunk with all hands. But miraculously, the Matsu escapes and reaches Singapore in July 1944. The failure of the, uh, the Allies to sink the Matsu was potentially one of the most dangerous intelligence disasters of World War II. Clearly, when uh, uh, the Japanese obtained uh, examples of jet aircraft and engines from the Germans or plans relating to these, uh, their first source was to put these into production as quickly as possible in order that they could develop their own uh, jet technology. The Japanese version of the ME-262 was to be called the Karyu, or Fire Dragon, and would be operated by the Japanese Army Air Force. But the task of mass producing the most complicated aircraft Japan had ever tried to build was a daunting one. The problem the Japanese faced was how to get enough power out of a jet engine. Uh, they knew they needed special materials to run at high heats, but the real trick was how to compress the air that comes in the front of the jet to mix with the fuel in the right way in order to get the power out the back end. And that's a tricky mathematical problem. And that's what they got from the Germans. Among the treasure trove brought back aboard the Matsu were top secret photographs of a revolutionary new high powered German jet engine being developed to power its newest jet fighter. The German aircraft manufacturer Heinkel had designed the HE 162 uh, Volksjäger or People's Fighter. Uh, as a, an aircraft which could be mass-produced very rapidly. From photographs and drawings, Japanese designers managed to produce their own workable engine. They called it the NE-20. The fact that the Japanese engineers were able to take a few sketches and a few photographs of a jet engine and build their own version is a tribute, in fact, to their genius. They weren't simply copying. They had to know an awful lot. They had to be really creative. Uh, and it just shows, even at that stage, how advanced the Japanese aviation industry was. The Imperial Navy planned to use this new engine in yet another Japanese version of the German ME-262. It was called the Kika, meaning Mandarin Orange Blossom. The first operational Kika flies over Tokyo Bay on August 7th, 1945, just eight days before the war ends. Even though the jet engine was smaller and put out less thrust than the German counterpart, so was the Kika. It was more lightly built and a smaller airplane. So when putting the two to, together, it was assumed that the Kika could have been developed into a fighter or a bomber very much like that of performance of the Messerschmitt 262. It would have been a major surprise to Allied fighters. Facing defeat, Germany and Japan increasingly turned to the creation of wonder weapons. Planes like the world's first operational jet fighter, the Messerschmitt ME-262. Japan also planned to build a version of the ME-262. It was to be called the Karyu, or Fire Dragon. The Fire Dragon would have flown at 200 miles an hour faster than any American fighter, faster than a Mustang, faster than a Thunderbolt, faster than a Lightning. Nothing would have caught it. Japan also had a version of the incredible Messerschmitt ME-163. It was called the Shushi, after the death stroke administered by a samurai sword. 
powered by a rocket engine, the Shushi could climb in only two and a half minutes to meet B-29s cruising five miles high. It flew at 600 miles an hour and was armed with two 30 millimeter cannon. Even more advanced Japanese jet projects were spun off from the plans delivered by the Italians. There was the Imperial Navy's Kika, meaning Mandarin Orange Blossom. Like the Oka, the Kika was designed to attack ships of the expected American invasion fleet. Similar in shape to the successful German ME-262, but smaller, the Kika had folding wings to allow it to be hidden in caves, safe from American bombing. The Navy ordered 200. Most amazing of all was the Kyushu J-7W Shinden interceptor fighter. This was the Japanese Imperial Navy's ultimate reply to the deadly B-29. The Shinden means magnificent lightning. Many experts have thought that Japanese technology was inferior to the Allies or the Germans, but in this case, the Shinden was superior to much that was around at that time. With its revolutionary rear-mounted swept wings and turbojet, the Shinden was one of the most advanced aircraft projects produced by any country during World War II. The early jet engines used during the Second World War had a particular problem, which the Japanese, with their typical engineering simplicity, managed to resolve. You see, you need to put a single jet engine in the middle of the plane to maintain the center of gravity. If you do that, the hot gases that exhaust out the end of the jet engine have a bad habit of melting the aircraft unless you have the right metal alloys. To avoid this problem, early jet engines were hung in pairs, one under each wing, making the plane too heavy. The Shinden overcame this problem by mounting the engine in the tail and reversing the normal aerodynamic configuration, putting the wings at the rear and balancing the plane by putting the control surfaces at the front. This revolutionary shape is called the canard wing. This revolutionary back-to-front wing was test flown on a glider in 1943. Design of the fighter version was started in earnest in June 1944 as the threat from the first B-29 raids became real. The first prototype, powered by a conventional prop engine, was ready in 10 months. The first test flight was on 3rd August 1945. In combat, the jet version of the Shinden would have been armed with four 30mm cannon or air-to-air -air missiles. In World War II, the Americans lost only 148 B-29s from enemy action. But if the Japanese had managed to deploy aircraft like the Shindens, they'd have lost hundreds more. The prototype Shindens were discovered by the American Army after Japan's surrender. They were taken to the United States and studied rigorously. The last one can still be found in the National Air and Space Museum in Washington. The Japanese found it very difficult to destroy the high-flying U.S. bombers because their planes did not work very well at extreme altitudes. Even when the Americans switched to carpet bombing with napalm at lower altitudes, the Japanese lacked the anti-aircraft guns, radar, and planes to do much damage. But a couple of hundred jet shindons would have stopped the Americans firebombing Tokyo. By 1945, Japanese rocket and jet technology was actually in advance of the United States. Had they deployed that technology, they could have met the American forces as equals. Yet there was one Japanese plane above all others that would have dramatically impacted the course of World War II. Although the Japanese were in the process of developing several planes using highly advanced technology, 
their most closely kept secret of aviation development was a revolutionary intercontinental bomber designed to hit U.S. cities from bases in Japan. It was called the Nakajima G-10N1 Fugaku, or Mount Fuji, traditional symbol of Japan. The Fugaku was to be powered by six Nakajima KK-11 engines, each generating 5,000 horsepower. It was designed to cruise at an altitude of 32,000 feet at a speed of 423 miles per hour, faster than most U.S. fighters and it was protected by four 20 millimeter cannon. If Japan could buy time by keeping Russia from attacking her, then she had a better chance of producing the new wonder weapons like the Shinden and the Fugaku.